Tyson Fury is where he is because he wins the fights that you think he's supposed to lose. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in attendance. On February 22nd, Tyson Fury with an airtight game plan and an inch perfect performance did exactly what he said he would do. You get no spark out! By stopping boxing's most dangerous man inside seven rounds. He's gone, I tell you what. This fight is going to be all over. A career-defining performance on American soil that reshaped the entire heavyweight landscape. AJ is the underdog against Tyson Fury. Perfect. Just how we want it. One that left question marks hanging over the sport's hardest hitter. What can he do next time? What can he do? And saw the bronze bomber enter unfamiliar territory, suffering the first loss of his 12-year professional campaign. You know, this is what big time boxing is all about. The best must fight the best. And we'll come back even stronger the next time around. As always, please click thumbs up, subscribe, and press the bell button to help us out. As now, despite the rumors, stories, and excuses, that expectedly follows such a convincing defeat, we are left wondering whether Deontay Wilder will ever be quite the same again. It was thrilling in the MGM Grand, it was stunning! Welcome to a Motopedia presentation. We will regain the title. I will be back. Gods. Kings. The trilogy fight, as it stands, will happen. And whilst the third fight doesn't merit the same enthusiasm, for Deontay Wilder, it represents a glimmer of hope. He can have a third fight in June. I don't think he's going to watch it. I'm very sure that that will not be exercised. first fight, and you almost put him to sleep in the 12th round of that first fight. You come into the second fight, dare I say, a little bit too cocky. Though, outboxed, outworked, and overwhelmed, it gets harder and harder to see what the American can do in a third fight to make all the difference. He got up from Deontay's best yeah. shot in the 12th round, and then as a mauler, won every round and beat him up. Why would it be any different in a third fight? Who looks the more relaxed? Who looks the more focused? We're about to find out. Simply put, Deontay didn't start fast enough. He didn't utilize his advantages and he had become far too reliant on his power. I am the hardest hitting puncher in boxing history, period. Wilder didn't neglect the fundamentals of boxing, but he did fall in love with the idea that he could put his opponent away at any given moment. I always say these guys have to be perfect. They have to be perfect. I don't, for 12 rounds, I only have to be perfect for two seconds, and each and every time I prove that. And now, the unwavering faith he had placed in his right hand needs to be placed on his own vindication. You know, he'll be back. He'll be all the better for it. We ain't going nowhere. For the war has just begun. I will rise again. After all, Wilder's aura revolved around his unorthodox style, his self-belief, and most importantly, his fear factor. He's scared, he's intimidated, he fears me because he never had a person like me to step to him. He never had a person to me look him in his eyes like he is. I can't wait. He finished his opponents in lunging, acrobatic style without an ounce of doubt in his mind. Oh, and the left hook drops so, with the curtain dropping and weaknesses being revealed, will we now see a more apprehensive version of the Alabama fighter? Beautiful. No one's attacked Wilder's body like that before. He did, know, did not know how to deal with that type of class. Or can he adapt and survive much like Joshua? To redefine his year. Yeah, it was just, well, I was just off that night. Fury won. So, I mean, we all have off nights. The big problem is that Fury is not Ruiz. He's a bigger, faster, and much more skilled opponent. One that, without his own perfect game plan, Wilder has a slim chance of beating. I see a Wilder just like I saw a Jeff Lacey when Jeff Lacey fought Kazai. He's going to be affected by the outcome of this fight the way he the way he took that uh maybe take some rest that, that would be my my thing take some rest get off your feet come back in clear-headed get after it ultimately losing is normal and overcoming adversity is what separates the good from the great and the sooner we normalize it the sooner we encourage the big fights to happen at the right times with incredible genetics and athleticism you would be crazy to disregard Wilder's ability to become a two-time world champion. 
But in boxing, sometimes people are just wrong for each other. And this could well be one of those cases. The only way you can ever beat Tyson Fury is nail him to the canvas. That's very, very true, Deontay. And you ain't the man to do it much, I tell you that. Due to the stylistic differences and the overall toll on the body, heavyweight trilogies are hard to come by. Though remembering knights such as Patterson Johansson, Bo Holyfield, and Ali Frazier is enough to prove that when they do come along, they make for era-defining moments. For the second year in a row, they fought the fight of the year. Deontay Wilder has now seen two very different versions of the Gypsy King. And as far as opponents go, the two are as familiar with one another as anyone else they've faced as professionals. Where Fury executed his game plan perfectly, the third fight now gives Wilder time to adjust. In which case, you'd imagine we should see a much closer fight than what we saw at the MGM. So, can he come back? Well, there's going to be psychological damage to his ego, to his confidence, but it starts where it should have started a long time ago. Learning. Wilder has already weighed up his options. After scrutiny, he has decided to keep Mark Breland, who threw the towel to end the February showdown. A wise decision not to remove a voice from his team, but to invite an additional one. Likewise, accepting the offer from the heavyweight legend George Foreman to enter his strength camp. When the bell would ring, I never took a step backwards. Now, fighting these guys, I'd have to be a lot smarter. I'm just so happy I don't have to fight them. We could see Wilder try to bring the same brawn and physical presence that helped Fury dominate second time around. Sometimes, you know, um, peer pressure, TV, you know, um, lots of things. There's, a lot of, there's lots of pressure on him, so he haven't got no choice. I think he gets beat up even worse this time. Heavyweights seem to peak a little later in their careers. Though with Deontay turning 35 this year, much like Triple G and the Canelo trilogy, time is certainly working against him. I, I don't think he'll bounce back from this round. The arguments and excuses help justify the third fight. But what the Bronze Bomber can bring to that third fight will justify whether we see him reclaim a place at the top of the sport. I wanna, I'm building for legacy. His confidence is his backbone. It's what makes his style work and what made him the sport's most dangerous man. And should he lose it? We simply won't see the same fight as a fucking killer. The hell is hitting heavyweight in history. And he's a fucking killer and he just like he got beat up and dominated. I think that's going to affect him a lot. A ferocious knockout, one that he's certainly capable of, would put him right back into contention for the top he's spot. He's got to go back and make some, some adjustments and um, he can do that. It's not very difficult to do that. Though, where he only has to be perfect for two seconds, if Fury puts him on the back foot again, those two seconds may cease to ever exist. So as for right now, the power is in his hands, and the rhetorical question stands. Will Deontay Wilder ever be the same again? Wilder recover from that beatdown. The bully was bullied. Will he ever be the same? Um, the answer is not so quick. Not so quick. <laughs>